The Link Engineering Headless Connectivity Module for LabLink can be seen here. On the front panel, I'd like to point out a couple of things. All the way to the left would be a Wi-Fi switch to turn the Wi-Fi network on and off. The Wi-Fi is only used for configuration and diagnostic troubleshooting of the module. To actually connect the module to your LabLink installation, you will need to use the Ethernet port located on the right side of the module. You will also notice at the bottom center the power input. This requires a 5 volt adapter. And directly above that, we have LEDs that communicate machine status for up to four machines. Inside of the module, a few important things to note. One would be that there is a micro SD card located on the underside of the Raspberry Pi module here. You also have small HDMI connectors here, which can be used to configure the module without having to connect over Wi-Fi. So this is an HDMI connection here, and then you have USB connections. Uh, typically it's easiest to use a wireless keyboard and mouse with a small dongle, as there's not a lot of clearance between the USB port and the wall. Also, we have a few different input and output optocouplers. The very first one here is the input optocoupler. Um, as I mentioned before, that this will show Wi-Fi status being on or off right now is on. Uh, the second one here is for the outputs that control the LEDs on the front panel that show machine status. And then the third and the fourth ones here provide the inputs from your connected machines. So you have the ability to bring in um, eight signals, so eight pairs of wires coming in, four on each optocoupler. This would be module, module one, this is module two, and this is port zero then port 1, port 2, and port 3. What I'm currently using here is set up for 24 volt DC inputs, but this can be set up for other voltages as well, 120, 240 volt AC, um, higher level uh, DC as well, and lower even if needed as well. So you have the ability to bring in eight different signals and so that would give you a maximum of four machines if you are only interested in a machine on and a machine running or cycling status. If you are interested to have additional inputs such as faulted or watchdog error, that would limit the number of machines that you can bring in. In order to configure the headless connectivity module for LabLink, I'm going to open my wireless network connections and I'm going to find the wireless network that matches status reporter setup. And in the instance where you may have more than one of these connectivity modules, it likely has a numeric value at the end indicating which box number it is. In this case, uh, status reporter setup 3 is the one that I'm going to connect to. And once you're connected, in order to get to the setup, pages where you want to go to is configure.com and there's another web page inspect.com. Both of these are used for um, configuration and diagnostics of the headless status reporter for LabLink. Now I should mention the first time that you go to connect to the wireless connection, you want to make sure that the Wi-Fi switch on the front panel of the module is in the up or the on position. And when you do that, you will notice on one of the optocouplers inside, the one closest to the Raspberry Pi computer, uh, the number one will be lit up in red when the Wi-Fi switch is turned on. And when you go to connect, the password is link, L-I-N-K, user, U-S-E-R, all lowercase with no spaces. And if you have a internet connection plugged into the ethernet port of the front panel, you will be able to get to other places on your network as well. Um, so I find this very useful to have ethernet hooked up 
so that I can actually navigate to LabLink to set up the machines and to copy machine keys and things of that nature. So what we're going to do here first is on our configure.com page, we're going to type in the URL for our LabLink installation. And in my case, this will be labLinkdemo.linkeng.com forward slash link. And you'll see here I can actually change my Wi-Fi name as well if I like. Um, so, so to avoid any confusion in the future, if you have multiple boxes all within um, proximity of each other, um, if you rename those, it will make it uh, easy to distinguish which ones are which. Now the Wi-Fi connection is for configuration and setup um, and diagnostic purposes only in order to make a connection to your LabLink server, an Ethernet connection is required. Okay, so once I've updated this, I'm going to go ahead and hit Update Details, and we'll see that we've updated our network settings. So depending on the number of inputs that are required from each machine, you have eight inputs total, um, you can connect up to four machines on a single headless connectivity module. Um, in the event where you need more than just power and running, if maybe you want faulted and or watchdog, that will limit the total number of machines that, you'll are, that you are able to connect. Um, so with eight inputs total, if you need power running, faulted, and watchdog, we would be able to connect uh, two machines per module. So we'll do a couple of different scenarios in our demonstration here today. Now to get started, I'm going to go to my LabLink installation, which is on the right side of the screen here and I'm going to go to Setup, and I'm going to go to Machines. And you'll see I've got a whole bunch of Raspberry Pi machines in here now, but I'm going to create a new one to show how that works. So very simple, I'm going to hit the blue plus button, the Create button, and I'm going to give this machine a name. I need to pick what type of machine it is and which laboratory it resides in. Okay, and then from here I need to give this a machine number and I also need to define a unique computer name and this could be the same as the machine number if you like and really we just need to make sure that we have a one-to-one -one relationship between the machine number the computer name and then that we have the machine key um, in order for there to be a connection between each of these each individual machines and your LabLink installation. Okay, now I do want to use this machine for scheduling purposes, um, but I will not be uploading any test data files. This is going to be something basic like an air compressor, cooling tower, or something of that nature. Okay, so now once I've done this, I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And on the right side of the screen, once I have located this new machine that I just created, which is down at the bottom here, this demo machine. Or if I do a quick search and just type in demo, that will make this much easier. Okay, over on the right side, in this drop down, instead of information, I'm going to look at technical details. And I need to generate a machine key. So if I click the generate key button here, that's going to generate a key in order for us to establish a communication between the Raspberry Pi module, the headless module, and LabLink. Okay, so I'm going to hit copy machine key here and then I'll paste that into my clipboard. And I'll start by just doing a, a paste here to get that information over. Okay, and then I'm going to look at my machine number again. And I'm just going to copy and paste this so I don't have any transcription errors. Machine number goes here. Computer name, even though this is the same, I'll copy paste just to avoid any mistakes. Okay, now what I want to do is I need to select which ports on the optocouplers am I going to use for um, the different machine statuses that I'm interested in. Okay, so on this machine, I would like to set up power, running, and faulted. So module one would be the third optocoupler if you were looking at the inside of the box with the Raspberry Pi computer all the way to the left. And module two would be the fourth one or the one all the way to the right. So on the first 
optocoupler that we have available for inputs, I'm going to select ports uh, 0, 1, and 2. And then I also have the ability to invert these signals. So these um, optocouplers are set up for 24 volt DC. In the event that I have 24 volt DC when the machine is off, I could simply click the invert power button here and then make the polarity of that work differently. Okay, so once I have a machine set up, I'm going to click the Save All Machines button here, and then I'm going to hit Save. Okay, now it's going to let me know that that is saved. We can see what the last status communication was, uh, which is shut down because this machine is off right now. But if I were to invert this signal here and hit Save again, okay, that's now going to put us into an idle state because now the machine is on but not running. Okay, now after turning the machine on here and getting a new a new status, I'm going to go over to my LabLink server here and I'm going to see if we actually established any communication. There's a couple ways to do that. Um, one, we could go back into setup and machines and then we can search for this machine which was called demo machine. And if I click on it here, over on the right side panel, it's going to tell me the last time it made communication, which was two minutes ago. What I also could do is go to Lab Monitor, and then go to Current Status. And you can see I've got a whole bunch of machines in here that are not communicating right now, but I do have this demo machine, and it's showing that it is in an idle state. Okay, now if I was to go back over here, invert this signal, and I have no voltage applied to these optocouplers right now, and hit save. Okay, we should now go to a running status. And if we wait momentarily, we should see this update here on the current status page. So now we can see this machine is running. So we are effectively communicating between the headless connectivity module and our LabLink server. Okay, so now let's set up a, a second machine, and this process will be the exact same as what we did before. I'm going to go to Set Up Machines, I'm going to create a new one, and we'll call this one Demo Machine 2. Pick its machine type, pick its location, and then I want to make sure that I have my machine number and my computer name set up here and I just want to make sure that this is this computer name and machine number is unique compared to any of the other machines and that we have a one-to-one -one relationship in our setup page here so again computer name I'm going to just copy that directly over machine number I'm going to copy that directly over okay I'm going to hit save here again to get a machine key over on the right side drop down go to technical details generate key and once I've done that if I click this button that will copy that directly to my clipboard I can just go over here and paste that now I need to select what inputs we want to use on this machine so if we do the same thing now I'm going to use um, the fourth port or port number three which can be a little bit confusing you have to consider that there is zero on the first optocoupler for machine on the port 0 on the second optocoupler that's available for inputs uh, for running and then faulted will go with the next one there. Okay and again I'll hit save. All machines have been updated. Okay now if I go back here to our scheduling I'm sorry lab monitor and go to our current status do a refresh here and we might need to actually change this to a running state or do some type of change that it sees. <laughs> demo machine 1 and demo machine 2. Now to show how the LEDs work for each machine status, we'll turn machine 1 on. You'll see a solid LED. Then we'll show machine running and we will see the LED blink at a relatively slow rate. And then finally, we'll show machine faulted condition, which will be a much 
faster blinking rate with a pause.